My name is Jamal Doman, the count of three. I want to say what's up, Jamal? One, two, three. What's up, Jamal? I'm happy to be here. I'm feeling good, working out. Got a new training, new workout program. Yeah. Yeah, trying to get back down to my original weight. Eight pounds, six ounces. <laughs> trying to get that newborn swag back. I'm working out because I'm trying to date. You know, it's hard to date in California. A lot of gold diggers live out here, right? I dated this girl last year. She was a gold digger. She complained the whole time we was together. Complained. Jamal, take me somewhere expensive. You never take me no place expensive. So I took her to the gas station. <laughs> Fill up pump eight. Bring me out of Slim Jim. <laughs> this recession is something, isn't it? It's rough out there. Everybody. Everybody's going through hard times, am I right? I was on Sunset Boulevard early today. I saw two pimps carpooling. <laughs> they had all they in the back seat, lapped up. <laughs> it's rough now, man. You ever wake up in the morning and think you're a special type of broke? Like I woke up this morning thinking to myself, I'm like broke to the third power. I'm like a new type of broke. This ain't no regular broke. I know I'm broke. I got a letter from my bank last week. They told me I bounced a money order. <laughs> Say, bring cash next time. <laughs> Gotta get some money, man. It's rough out there. My friends took me to the strip club. The stripper told the stripper, he been in movies, he been on television, he's a comedian. The stripper don't know I'm broke. That money gone. That was one check. It's <laughs> one check is gone. She, she started giving me a lap dance. She got dollar signs and I was talking about, Jamal, make it rain. Jamal, make it rain. I'm like, I can make it drizzle. I got six dollars in my pocket. <laughs> they said it's gonna be sunshine tomorrow. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Gas got everybody broke, right? right? Gas so high now, only date girls in my neighborhood. I'm like, if I can't walk to your apartment, this lady should be gonna work out, boo. I'm gonna let you know right now. <laughs> I'm telling you, gas changed the way guys approach women. This changed the way men approach women. I'm at the mall the other day. I'm outside the foot, like I see a beautiful woman. Oh, she was beautiful. She was a dime. I had to step to her. I had to approach. I was like, hey, excuse me, can I ask you your name? She's like, Jasmine. I said, Jasmine, nice to meet you. I'm Jamal. She's like, Jamal, nice to meet you. I said, Jasmine, do you have a man? Are you single? She said, no, I don't have a man right now. I'm single. I said, well, cool. You know, I had to jump on. I said, listen, that's my business card. I would love to take you out, you know, go get something to drink. That's cool with you. She's like, fine, no problem. As long as you come pick me up, Jamal, because I don't drive. So I have no problem with you taking me out as long as you come pick me up. I was like, cool, I'll come get you. She's walking away. I was like, by the way, where you live at? She's like, Victorville. Give me my car back. <laughs> Better catch the train down here. <laughs> so I'm from North Philadelphia. I'm from a rough neighborhood. The projects in North Philadelphia, yes. That's yes, rough neighborhood. Neighborhood so bad the mailman wear his regular clothes. <laughs> Gotta blend in with these cats. <laughs> North Philly is rough, man. I saw a crackhead with skinny jeans on. <laughs> they was hanging off him, looked like he had on sweatpants. So this dude got a jogging suit on. It's always rough, man. Guys always trying to test you. I was, a couple months ago, I was back home. My old block was a guy just eyeballing me down. I'm walking on my old block, guy just eyeballing me down. Don't you hate that, fellas? When somebody don't know you, but they looking at you like they know you all too good. They're trying to test your manhood. He was trying to test my manhood. I wouldn't let him do it. I walked up to him. I said, hey, do you know me? He looked me up and down. I said, no, I don't know you. I said, you don't know me. Don't eyeball me down like that, all right? Where I come from in this neighborhood, somebody eyeball you down like that? Well, you supposed to walk right up to him and punch him in his mouth. Get his respect. That's how we do it in this neighborhood right here. The guy got into Jeep. This guy was like 6'3", 280, solid muscle. I took one good look at him and said, but I'm glad I moved out this neighborhood too. We need to stop all this black on black crime. Because I don't fight. I press charges. That's what I do. <laughs> Trying to get my credit together, man. My credit. My credit's bad. Okay. Yeah, my credit on life support, man, my credit. <laughs> my credit on death row. What's a good credit score, like 740, 750? My credit score like a winning NBA score, 120, 125. It's good for the Lakers, it ain't good for me. My credit's so bad, a credit card, they won't even give me a library card. I'm like, I'm too broke to read, this is ridiculous. 
But sometimes bad credit come in handy. I know you're looking at me like, how does bad credit come in handy? I'm gonna tell you, a couple months ago, I was a victim of identity theft. Somebody went through my trash and stole my identity. That's why they tell you to rip up your trash, right? Somebody stole my identity. But I guess whoever it was, I guess they ran my credit and realized how broke I was. They called me up on the phone and gave me back to me. <laughs> Told me being a me was a waste of his time. He was better off being himself. His credit score higher than mine. <laughs> he sent me $75 in the mail, told me I'd get it back to him when I get back on my feet. I said, that's an honest thief. <laughs> we live in a cell phone age, don't we? Everybody got a cell phone, especially in California. This is a cell phone caps. I think they give you a cell phone when you get off the planes. It's like, hey, welcome to California. Here's your cell phone. <laughs> Everybody got a cell phone. I was downtown on Skid Row. I seen a homeless guy talking to his cell phone. <laughs> he was bumming for change while he was talking to his cell phone. Everybody got, I got a homeless guy live outside my building. He got more minutes on his phone than me. I'm like, somebody call Sprint up. I need a homeless plan. How many minutes he got? <laughs> One day I looked out my window. I watched this homeless guy talking to his cell phone for two straight hours. I'm watching him. Well, my, Two hours watching him talking to his cell phone for two straight hours. I couldn't take it no more. I walked up to him. I said, man, how did you do that? He told me he had free homeless to homeless. <laughs> so he talked to all his friends for free. <laughs> yeah, California is the homeless capital of the world. Man. Got a homeless couple. Live outside my homeless couple, boyfriend and girlfriend. Live outside my I ain't got a girlfriend. This dude got a girlfriend. I got cable, I got a refrigerator, I got air conditioner, a couch, I don't know what he got. The earth, the street light, I don't know. <laughs> homeless couple live outside my building. All they do is argue every day. Every day she threatens to move out. <laughs> I'm like, where you moving to? <laughs> she took a shopping cart to move across the street. Now she stayed with the homeless guy across the street. Her ex-boyfriend, he coming across the street harassing her, stalking her, going through a shopping cart when she not home. Yeah, she had to get a restraint order against him. But now I know the judge told me he better not come within three shopping carts of her. Or they're gonna take away his cell phone. I'm Jamal Dome. Enjoy the rest of the show. Thanks a lot.